Hey, do you remember the drawing ad that we built literally like two days ago? Well, today, shout out to this dude, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a WebSockets integration so we can interact with the same canvas on multiple devices. And even if you're a beginner, don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through every step of through every steps, through every step of um, implementing WebSockets. This is totally beginner friendly. Let me show you exactly what we're gonna build and dive right in. Okay, so here we are in the previous um, thing. We built the uh, drawing app that worked just fine in the browser. We've built that in the last video. Let me quickly show you what that looked like. So let's start up the server and then go to localhost 3000. And this was the drawing app we've built in the last video. So you can draw in any color, you can clear the canvas, pretty cool functionality. And in this video, we're gonna make a WebSockets integration. So right now, as you can see, when I load up the local host, um, again, nothing happens because this um, canvas state is not being propagated to this instance right here. But what we're gonna do, and I've got the working version over here, so let me quickly pause this one and open the um, one I've already coded out. And so the, it's gonna be a bit different. We're gonna have a client and a server in this one. And let's uh, start up the client and then also start up the server. So yarn server. And as you can see, now we have the client and the server running. And when we go to localhost 3000, and that might take a second, we can draw something like a smiley. And then when we go to localhost 3000 in another tab, we can see what we have previously drawn. And if I open them uh, side by side, um, you can see whatever we write or draw on one of them, we can also see on the other one. And we can clear the canvas that will work for both as well. And how cool is that? And that's what we're gonna work on in this video. And if you've never worked with WebSockets, don't worry, the integration is not that hard. Um, so for now, let's uh, terminate this batch job and also pause the client. And it looks like the server has terminated as well, uh, has terminated itself. And okay, I've got that project open here on my, on my left. And uh, we're gonna work on integrating this in this um, current project that we've built out in the last video. And I think the first thing we're gonna start with is um, installing the packages we need. So let's add um, the socket, socket. Oh, actually, no, let's not do that. I think the first thing we're gonna do, I've got my OBS open here, um, is wrap this in another folder. So let's call it canvas tutorial and put the canvas drawing up in there. And then let's name, uh, rename this one to client because we're gonna have a client and a server. And uh, let's also create a folder, call it server. Now let's open that in VS Code. I think that makes more sense because now we can install packages that are specific to the client and that are specific to the server. So let's go into the server directory for a second and let's type npm init dash y. So the dash y is just gonna create the package.json for us without us having to, you know, verify each step of it. So that's way easier. And okay, now we have the package.json. Let's install the npm i socket.io. And let me also see if we need anything else. Cause, okay, yes we do. So we also want the um, express. Then we need node, node mon to keep the server running and also TS node because we're gonna be working in TypeScript uh, on the server, which is not gonna be a huge deal. So even if you've never worked with TypeScript before, do not worry, it's um, gonna be really easy. Okay, and now inside of the server, let's create a file, call it index.ts. You can call it whatever you want. You could call it um, like server.ts, I think is very common. And the first things we're gonna do is um, import a bunch of stuff. I'm just gonna copy this over. Now, um, the GitHub repo is gonna be in the description, so don't worry, you don't have to type this out yourself. Oh, and we also want the npm i add types slash node, so we get rid of these arrows right here. And that should uh, get rid of them. Let me restart the TypeScript server, and I think, no, they are still there. Oh, I didn't um, install them as dev dependencies. Okay, hold up. Let's um, install them as dev dependencies and that should uh, fix the error. 
Okay, and now... Wait, that still didn't fix the error. Cannot find name. Okay, you know what? Let's just uh, declare var require any... Uh, whatever. I don't know why this error uh, occurred. Let's just um, get rid of it like that. I know that's um, pretty dirty, but whatever. Um, and now, let's import the server from... Oops. From socket.io. And I'm gonna turn GitHub, uh, GitHub Copilot off for a second here. You can see that's a pretty um, heavy dependency, but because we're on the server, we are not really gonna worry about that. And then we're gonna create a new server instance. Now that's gonna take the server we created up here, the HTTP server. And as a second argument, we're gonna pass an object that has course, which is an object, and the origin is just gonna be a star. So you wouldn't really want the, the star for actual production level projects, but for our local one, that's totally fine. Um, it just means we're allowing anyone access to our server, essentially. Okay, and now that we got the server, we can say io.onConnection. So that means when, oops, connection. So that means whenever a WebSocket or a client that we're gonna define in a second connects to our WebSocket server, what should happen? Well, the first thing we're gonna receive is the socket. And let's declare this as a function, not as a seven. And as you can see, the socket type is already here. So we don't need to worry about that. And now we can do a bunch of stuff. So we can say, for example, um, socket.on. And we can say on draw dash line, because that's the event we're going to fire from the client. In a second, we're going to receive some stuff. That's going to be a previous point. And um, I'm going to get to why we are receiving those in a second, the current point and the color. Now, how do I know we are receiving these properties? Well, we can go to the um, to the page and we can see in here that the draw line takes a previous point, a current point, a context, which we're not going to pass to the server. And then we're also going to pass a color in a second. So we can actually propagate the color that each client uses as well. Now, we still need the type for this and we're going to call it draw line. And this draw line type we're gonna define up here, which is gonna be an you know TypeScript type. The previous point is gonna be of type point. Now that point also doesn't exist, so we're gonna say type point is equal to an object that has x as a number and y as a number as well. So really simple. And the previous point could also be null. So if we didn't paint anything yet, then the previous point is null, and the current point. It's going to be wherever we start painting, so it will always be, um, you know, defined or not null. And then the color, which we're going to define in a second, is going to be a string. So that's just going to be a regular hex string. Now, this doesn't work yet. The type draw line. And that is because we also need to define this as a function that will um, infer the types correctly. And now in here, we're going to say socket.broadcast.emit. And we're emitting the... Um, draw dash line event and we are passing some properties as the second parameter which are going to be essentially everything we received up here so the current point the uh, previous point and the color now what exactly is happening here okay look when we are on the client we're going to fire an event that is called draw line and whenever we fire this event after establishing a web sockets connection to this server right here so this is the server file um, whenever we fire the event from the front end, the web sockets are going to pass this event to the server and we are listening to this specific event. So if we fire it from the client, we're going to have to say draw line exactly like here. And then the server is going to listen to that event. We are going to pass the data from the client to the server. And then whenever the server listens to that event, it emits to all other instances that are listening to the web sockets connection. Um, these exact data points, but not to the one that sent it. So imagine we have, um, you know, uh, let me let me draw that out for you. Give me a second. So imagine this: we have a um, let's make a new layer. We have a bunch of clients right here. So we have a client, another client, and then another client, and then we have the server. So the client in this instance would be. Um, this page right here, and then the server would be this index file where, that we're also going to host. And whenever one client draws a line, that change will get sent to the server. The server is then going to receive it right here um, at the draw line event, and it's going to get the data that we pass from the client to the server. 
And then this socket.broadcast.emit means we're emitting that event to everybody that is not the sender. So we're sending the draw line to this guy and this guy, but we're not sending it back to this guy because this client already knows where the line has been drawn because it was the one that originally drew the line. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we're just doing here. So nothing like no rocket science. And um, there are a couple of things on the client that we still need um, to do for this to work. And I think the first thing that makes sense is to abstract this logic into a um, helper function. So let's um, cut it out of there. Let's have a new folder, call it uh, utils, because I think, yeah, we don't have one yet. Let's call this function drawline.ts, export that uh, constant. And uh, wait, that is not what we wanted to do. Um, let me check what I did in the real one. Okay, we are gonna remove this again. Export constant draw line, which is gonna be a function. And then in here, we're gonna uh, define all that stuff. And this function is gonna receive a previous point, a current point, the context of the canvas that we are drawing on, and then the color, and that is gonna be of type draw line props. Now, if you're working along in TypeScript, nice. If you're not working along in TypeScript, so in JavaScript, uh, you don't need to worry about the types at all. I'm just doing this because I uh, enjoy using TypeScript. So uh, this type we're gonna type out as something that has the draw inside. And if you don't know that uh, draw type is something we defined in the last video, we created a um, file called typings.d.ts. And in here we typed out the types we need for that. And to merge types in TypeScript, we can say draw and, and then we can add the one property we want uh, in here. Because as you can see right now, the color um, wouldn't be defined. We defined these three properties in the type right here. And now we are essentially saying, and also add the color, which is going to be a string. And that is essentially all we're doing in the draw line function. Now, the reason we are doing this is so at the client side, we can um, have two different types of draw line. The first one is going to be a create line. And the second one is going to be a replicate line. So that means when we are drawing, we are calling the function called create line. And you're going to see in a second why we're making a difference out of those two. Um, we need the previous point, the current point and the context, which are going to be of type draw, the one we um, initialized here. And then this function is going to do two things, very simple. First off, um, it's going to emit to the server. That's the most important thing. And to do that, um, let's check our package.json if we already Okay, we don't have it installed yet. So let's go to cd dot dot cd client. And inside of the client, let's install socket.io dash client. And that's the packet we're going to use to communicate with our WebSockets server. So nothing special there. We are going to wait. Oh, and I did use yarn for this project. Now I used npm. Uh, that's probably not the best practice, but whatever. Um, and then we're going to import something from socket.io slash client. And what are we going to import? That is going to be the IO. Okay. Now that we've got the IO on the front end, we can say the const socket is going to be equal to IO. And then the um, address we're going to be connecting to. So where our um, WebSocket server is going to be hosted, which is going to be right here. And um, Right now, it wouldn't be hosted there. So that's why we still need to say um, server.listen. And for some reason, oh, yeah, we declared it as any. That's why I don't get. Oh, look, now it works. OK, whatever, dude. Listen. Wait, is my VS code just really laggy? Well, I'm not getting any code completion right now. I'm not too sure why, but you probably will when you're coding along. And let's just say console.log server listening on port 3001. And that's pretty much all we need to do. So we're starting up the server, the WebSocket server, and now we should be able to connect from the client side. Let's, um, let's just start up the server for a second. Um, let's have one client, we can call it um, client. That's what I like to do when I work with a client and a server, rename this to server. And then on the server, let's go into the server and say, Oh, we can't start the server yet because we have to update the package.json. So let's say server 
and in here let's say node mon index.ts so that means uh, whenever we are executing the script npm run server this command right here will run and because we have installed ts node it should know what to do and it does and the server is listening great okay we can close the server we don't need it right now and now that we have gotten the server running let us um, work on the client side for one more second so inside the create line we can say or actually no let me show you that we can connect to the server so yarn server and then on the client yarn oops well why is this not working yarn dev um, and let's start the server up local host go to the server and we should see that actually no we're probably not going to see anything because we need to log out connection and now that we did that server is going to restart and we can see connection okay great that is exactly what we want we've connected to the client add uh, to the server from the client i just wanted to show you that it already works and um, just so you get a better understanding of what we are currently doing okay so that means the server connection is successful now what do we do and i say we are going to work on the create line so whenever we draw a line from the client we're going to emit a websockets event and that event is going to be called draw line now why is it called draw line because we are listening to this exact event on the server so this string right here needs to match this string right here that we're emitting from the client and then as the uh, second parameter or argument uh, we're going to pass whatever we want to receive on the server which is going to be these three properties right here the previous point the current point and the color so previous point current point and then the color that we want to pass and that is all we need to do right here and then we're going to call the draw line we've initialized as or not initialized we've put as the utils we've abstracted into the utils uh, because we're going to call it from two different points and by abstracting it we are not gonna you know uh, just copy paste code because that's never the way to go okay because we've already defined the function draw line here um, this doesn't really know what to do so we need to import it from our uh, utils and now this is throwing an error um, let's see okay and this is not what we want either way so we're gonna create line so whenever we draw on the canvas this create line function is gonna get called and um, because we're passing it to the use draw hook the use draw hook is something we've defined in the last video that essentially just handles the uh, drawing process okay let's save that and then uh, let's see at how it's working so let's start the client start the server and now that we've got those things done we can connect to the server let's see if we get a connect message right here because we should because we're connecting uh, from the client great we do get the connection messages and now let's see what happens so does the web sockets work no they don't but if we go to inspect and then we can go actually in this window we can go to um, network ws so web sockets and uh, honestly it's kind of a pain working like that in um firefox so let me just open this example in chrome really quick um because i think the um, network tab is just way more enjoyable in chrome let's go to the network tab right here and then also right here take a look at what happens so open the network tab go to web sockets and reconnect so we get the web sockets and this is the connection we are making to the server and now whenever I draw right here, we can see this client is receiving a lot of information. And this information is exactly what we drew right here. But if we reconnect on this client, and let's take a look at what this client gets, this client is uploading a bunch of data. So we are sending the data from the client. Uh, so take a look at this. We are sending the data from the client by emitting. So that's what... Um, this green stuff is right here we are emitting then we are receiving that data on the server sending it back to all websocket instances that are not the sender so everything except this guy so if i had five tabs open then the right four would all get the websockets data but this one wouldn't because it's the sender and then we are receiving that data on the client but we're not doing anything with that data yet because on the client we are not listening to the event and uh, to listen to the event, just like we do on the server, um, on the client, 
Um, we're going to do that inside of a use effect. Uh, we don't want any unwanted side effects. Um, have that with an empty dependency array. And inside of that use effect, now we can actually listen to um, what happens when we draw a line. So websockets.on draw dash line. So whenever this event gets received from the client, and we are going to receive a bunch of properties because remember, we are just forwarding them from the server. So um, these are the, the properties we are going to receive on the client. And those are going to be of type draw line props. And that is going to be a function. So let's initialize, initialize it as that. And then the draw line props is going to be, um, let's define it up here. It's going to be this type right here. So we, we have a previous point, a current point, and a color. Okay, and to do anything inside of there, we need the context of the canvas. So uh, we're going to say canvas ref dot current dot can uh, dot get context. So this is going to be the ref to this canvas right here. And after getting that ref, we can actually do something with it. Um, but first, we want a guard clause. So if the context doesn't exist, we're going to return. So nothing will happen. But if it does, we're going to call the util helper we have initialized and then draw a line from the previous point to the current point on the context, so the canvas, in a color, which is going to be color. And that is exactly why we've abstracted the draw line into a separate file, because we don't want to copy paste code um, two times. We can just call the same function twice from here. And now let's take a look at what happens. So actually, let's we can just continue in Chrome for now. We still have the server up and running and the client up and running. Let's restart these two clients. And let's take a look at what happens. And as you can see, whenever we draw a line, the changes get propagated to the other client. So I could open them side by side right here, close this down. And as you can see, it works. And it also works with the color. Now the clear canvas doesn't work yet because we haven't done a WebSockets integration for that. That one is going to be really simple. But for now, uh, actually, yeah, let's, let's work on the... Um, on the clear for a second. But remember, before we do that, and because we are using something externally in the use effect, we also want to include that in our dependency array. And now, okay, the clear is going to be really easy. Um, so we're going to listen to the clear event, socket on clear. And whenever the clear happens, we're just going to call the clear function that we're getting from the use draw hook um, that we're exporting from there. And now, when do we want to clear this? Well, we can just say in here, um, socket.emit clear. That's all we need to do. Then on the server, we need to listen to that event. So we can say socket.on, um, the string needs to match. So it's going to be the clear. And then we're going to say io.emit clear. And the difference between socket.broadcast.emit uh, and io.emit is that while well, we are returning this one to every everyone but the sender, the io.emit is literally gonna emit the event to every connected instance. So every canvas is gonna be cleared. We can save that, take a look at what happens. Um, so we're gonna draw something. We see the drawings here. If we clear the canvas, the canvas is cleared for both. Great. Now, the only problem that I have with this integration is that whenever we are not connected and draw something, and then connect. As you can see, the drawing does not show up for the second client that connected, which is something you definitely want in a, you know, something like a game. And a solution I've come up with to figure that out is not keeping the canvas state server side, because um, I think that would be very um, intensive regarding the uh, calculations. Oh, and actually, let me make the code a bit larger for you. And because we, we would have to pass a base64 every time we drew um, from the client to the server, and I don't think that's the way to go. So what I've come up with is whenever we um, connect in the from the client in the use effect, we're emitting an event called client ready. Now we're going to listen to that event on the server. Uh, so right here we can say, let's say uh, socket.on on client dash ready because remember the strings need to match and whenever the client is ready we're just gonna um, socket.broadcast.emit get canvas state. So what are we doing? Essentially when a new client connects that has no idea what the current state of the canvas is 
we're gonna sending we're gonna be sending that to the server and the server is sending to all other client instances that are previously connected that know what the current canvas state is that a new user has connected and it wants to get the canvas state from them um, and now uh, let, let me move that to the left and now we can work with that so we are getting a request for every other client to send back the canvas state data now to make use of that we are gonna say on the client get canvas state so we're gonna listen to that event we're not gonna get anything from the server because we didn't pass anything right here and then right here we're gonna say if the canvas ref dot current dot to data url does not exist then we are returning so essentially what this is going to do it's going to turn the canvas drawing that we have so this one right here whatever is on it is going to turn this into a long 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 string and if you want we can log out the uh, canvas ref dot current dot to data url uh, see what happens so reload the page and go to the console uh, and it doesn't show up right now because we would need to connect with another client um, and as you can see now um, this client is supposed to send this to the server and as you can see this is a really long string that essentially captures whatever is in this image as a string so we can send that to the server and then back to the client that just connected now to do that um, we are gonna say socket.emit we're gonna call this ca canvas-state and we're going to pass the canvas ref dot current dot to data URL as the second parameter. We can remove the optional chaining because we know this already exists and we're sending that to the server. Now to work with that on the server, you know the drill by now, we're going to say socket dot on. We're going to listen to that event and whenever we receive the canvas dot app dash state, um, we are receiving the state as the first parameter. And um, so, so whatever we pass right here. We are receiving that right here in the state. And then let's say socket.broadcast.emit um, and let's call it canvas state from server. And essentially what we're doing now is passing this state back to the client that just connected, but to no one else. Um, and we're going to pass the state, just uh, forward the state that we got on the server to the client that just connected. And that is that is the work on the server done. That's all we need to do. And then on the client that just connected, the it's going to be the only one that receives the image. And we're going to say can uh, socket.on and then canvas state from server. Let's just copy it from here because that's what we call the event on the server. We are going to receive the state, which is, as I've shown you, a really long string. And whenever we receive that string, that's console.log. Um, I received the state to let the to let us know that we received the state on the client and then let's say const image is equal to a new image and the image dot source is equal to the state so the really long image we passed to the server will be received right here we are initializing a new image and setting that um, state as the image source and whenever the image loads so image dot on load um, a, a function is going to get called and that is going to be context if that exists dot draw image and that way we can um, you know draw the string to the actual canvas at zero zero so the canvas is just going to be uh, the image is just going to be painted on the canvas we can save all of this and now really important um, in the return statement of the use effect we need to clean up whatever we did with the socket.on because these are similar to an event listener, right? And if we initialize event listeners in use effect, we also need to clean them up. So we need a bunch of sockets.off, which is gonna be the everything we have an on, basically. Whenever we have a socket.on, we also need a socket.off. So we have the um, get canvas state, we have the canvas state from server, and then we have the draw line, and we also have the um clear wait didn't we have the clear oh we had it down here okay never mind let's move that up and now that we've cleaned up after ourselves let's take a look at what happens in the browser okay so i've connected with two clients and uh, 
Wait, that, that doesn't really make sense. So let's um, have a smiley right here and then connect with a second instance. And as we can see, the changes do get um, propagated to the client. So what exactly is happening? We can take a look at the console. Um, let's see what's happened. I received the state. Um, and that is the console log we have defined right here. So, okay, let me, let me demonstrate to you what happens. We have this instance, which is already connected. And then the new instance, this one comes along. And um, let's take a look at the code. So whenever this new instance, the second tab right here, comes along, it says, I am ready. The client is ready. Then the server takes notice of that and sends to everybody else. So this tab right here, the message, okay, uh, somebody else connected, get me the current canvas state. So we're essentially turning this guy into our zombie that is just sending the data to the server because that's what, that's what we're forcing it to do. Then uh, the, the client is listening and uh, when it gets, you know, when, when the server wants the state, it's being listened to here and the client sends back the state with the current um, canvas that we turned into a long ass string. The server is receiving that string and then emitting to everybody else. So whatever, whoever just connected the long S string that we are receiving right here. And then we're setting that long S string as the um, current canvas. So we are sending it to the server, receiving it on whoever just connected. And that way we can get the current data and also all the benefits of, you know, just um, drawing in colors and uh, it will be monitored on all instances that are connected to the WebSockets server. Great. Okay. I'm really happy with that WebSockets integration. I think this is um, a great practice if you've never worked with WebSockets. And there are a bunch of ways you can um, expand on this project as well. You can work on the CSS, turn this into a beautiful page. With Socket.io, you could have separate rooms. So not whoever connected to this server at all, but you can have separate drawing rooms. That could be something you want to work on. And uh, yeah, just have fun with the project, experiment a bit. And that is pretty much it. I really hope you found this video helpful um, and fun to watch. I'm going to see you in the next one. And until then, have a good one. Bye bye.